Thank you for joining us. This is a InfoWars.com special report streaming live at PrisonPlanet.tv. Thank you so much for joining us. It is August 25th, 2011 on this Thursday edition. Coming up later in the special news report, we're going to break down the fact that Obama has incredibly low approval ratings. In fact, the lowest in modern history for a president two and a half years into their first term. And we'll compare those numbers to Gallup polls showing that Ron Paul polls even better than Rick Perry in a head-to-head -head run against President Barack Obama. Then we'll ask the question, is Apple evil? Steve Jobs, the owner and head of Apple, has stepped down because of health issues. And I think it's important to go back and look at the real history of Apple, uh, not the public relations campaign that we've been fed. Also, towards the end of this transmission, we're going to look at the latest developments in Libya and the fact that even mainstream media admits al-Qaeda is being protected and put into power in that North African state as a new base of operations to menace the West. But don't worry, Big Brother is going to be more than happy to take good care of us by taking our liberties. Now, before we get to all of that news, I first want to get into a report dealing with the fact that the carbon taxes, the greenhouse taxes, are now hitting. It turns out that Congress won't pass a law uh, to restrict coal power plants that give more than 50 percent of the power to the United States. And so President Obama is simply using the EPA and regulators to go in and slap the new regulations that they admit will cause rolling blackouts and huge power price increases against their competition. Because you see General Electric and other insiders that are part of his administration, they're exempt. So let's go to that report. Obama hit struggling Americans with energy rate hikes. Following Barack Obama's vow to bankrupt the coal power industry, Americans are set to be hit with a wave of utility bill hikes as draconian EPA regulations drive up the cost of energy. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. The Obama administration's crusade against coal-fired power plants, which was launched on the back of discredited junk science about hyped global warming threats, has little to do with improving the environment and everything to do with lowering living standards by creating artificial scarcity. The EPA has now listed as harmful carbon dioxide that is part of the life cycle of the planet. New EPA rules dictate that utility companies will be forced to spend an initial outlay of $800 million to conform with regulations that mandate harmful emissions be reduced under the Clean Air Act. And yet power plants supplied by General Electric, one of Barack Obama's biggest campaign contributors, have received an EPA waiver and will not be subject to the new regulations. The new rules will exacerbate the problem of rolling blackouts, warns Donna Nelson, head of the Texas Public Utility Commission. Nelson said, quote, I have no doubt in my mind that this rule will result in reliability issues and rolling outages in Texas. Obama's strict enforcement of draconian EPA regulations has led to new clean-burning coal-fired plants being mothballed and other existing ones being shut down which has in turn led to Texas and other states becoming energy dependent. All of this, of course, will lead to significantly higher utility bills for U.S. citizens who are being assaulted with more and more expenses even as the threat of a double-dip recession lowers living standards. With more on these incredible developments, we're joined by Infowars.com, reporter Darren McBreen in downtown Austin. I'm Darren McBreen with InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm here today at the Texas State Capitol. And we're about to find out if the people of Austin are aware that they are about to be hit by a wave of utility bill hikes as new EPA regulations drive up the cost of energy. What do you think about paying higher utility bills because of the EPA's new regulations against power plants? You know, there may be some new regulations coming up against power plants at this point. 
But unfortunately, right now, I think that our, our citizens, uh, statewide and nationwide, basically overburdened, especially with, with today's economic uh, developments and situations that are going on. I think rate hikes should be at a minimal to at least try to alleviate some of the burden on our, our, our taxpayers and our citizens nationwide and statewide. I know a lot of people that are going to be not only shocked, but a little bit irritated about that as well. Absolutely. I mean, they're already, I mean, because it's such a hot summer. Exactly. You exactly. know, everybody's yes. bills is already up through the roof. You're already paying through the roof because the ACs are running nonstop. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, on top of that and with a downturn economy, yeah, it it's, doesn't seem to jive that well. Of course, I don't want to pay higher utility bills. They're already extremely high right now as it is. Well, I don't want to pay more because um, because of the carbon dioxide thing. That doesn't seem right, especially if it's not even proven. Generally, I, I prefer regulations that, that deter pollution um, and paying a little bit more for that than an unregulated environment. It all has to be regulated some way, right? It's going to mess our environment up. I understand the tax on carbon footprints, but I mean, who's, who's you know, getting a new Lexus, you know what I mean? Do you think that carbon dioxide is dangerous? I think carbon di dioxide can be very dangerous. Okay, what, what do plants breathe? Carbon dioxide. Yeah, I think carbon, carbon dioxide is definitely dangerous, otherwise there wouldn't be any, uh, like, rules and laws to prevent it being... Okay, uh, what do plants breathe? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is turned into oxygen by plants. Okay. So I mean, we're, I mean, it has to be in the world. Obviously it's not all dangerous. Carbon dioxide isn't a dangerous gas, but when there's too much of it, it's a problem. Carbon dioxide, even though it's a natural gas uh, consumed by plants, uh, it can be dangerous because, uh, well everyone says it has to do with global warming. Behind me is the Holly Street Power Plant. It was partially closed in 2004 and officially shut down in 2007. Now it's simply a reminder of Austin's energy independence. Uh, what do you think about the fact that General Electric, one of Obama's biggest donors, that they get a waiver and they will not be subject to the regulation? That sounds like politics and lobbyists work. I mean, it's government, right? Exactly. No surprise. Sounds plausible. Yeah, it sounds possible. There's no surprise about that. General Electric doesn't need any favors from anybody. They're a multi-billion dollar corporation. Are you aware that some of these new regulations are also shutting down power plants and this is causing some of the, the rolling blackouts throughout Texas? No, I wasn't familiar with that actually. Didn't realize that was going on. Lobbyists make a lot of money making striking these deals. There's a lot of things that we don't know and how government, you know, the tax breaks, the incentives, loopholes, you name it. So I think it's just one more to add to the list. Well, as you can see, Alex, the people here in Austin, they're aware that their utility rates are going up, but they're not sure of the real cause. This is Darren McBrain with InfoWars Nightly News. All right. Thank you, Darren. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to that? We're going to do some other pieces here in Austin where we're going to go out and say, should we ban dihydrogen monoxide? We've done them before years ago. And over 90% of people say, yeah, ban it right now. And even after you tell them that dihydrogen monoxide is water, they still say ban it. If the government says it, it must be reasonable. Ladies and gentlemen, they've done ice core samples. In the last 200,000 years, we've had 14 times higher carbon dioxide than we have right now. The truth is, they've done studies. If carbon dioxide was doubled, the Sahara would be a jungle. We are in a carbon dioxide starved situation. And the globalists have chosen carbon dioxide, part of the life cycle, part of the carbon cycle, oxygen, carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water. you got to have those four things. So they can tax breathing. I saw a New York Times article years ago saying, yes, we're going to tax breathing. You'll pay your money to Al Gore. It's good. Well, I'm sorry. There's a lot of real environmental issues I'm concerned about, like Fukushima still melting down, belching radiation, or genetic engineering, you know, splicing spiders and goats, or my corn having pesticide uh, put into it. You know, I personally, I've had enough. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, this special report is just getting started. We're going to come back from break and uh, get into the latest on Obama's plunging poll numbers, uh, Ron Paul's exploding poll numbers, and we'll talk to Ron Paul's former chief of staff, no other than Lou Rockwell, on the other side. Please stay with us. It's InfoWars Special Report.
You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place against the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv, download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear. Coming up, we're going to be looking at the latest developments in North Africa, Libya, Tripoli, Gaddafi's uh, latest defiant threats against the West, and the fact that our new ally is Al-Qaeda. But first, I wanted to talk about President Obama. President Obama was sold as this outsider, a guy that was going to get the job done and end the war, stop the torture, and deal with those pesky central bankers. Well, since he's gotten in, we've have learned that, lo and behold, he works for who? Finance team. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. He's their man. And the American people have woken up to him. He now has the lowest approval rating of any president two and a half years into their first term. So what is the system doing? Well, they've got Rick Perry coming out saying he wants to get rid of the Fed and trying to sound like Ron Paul. But if you look at the different Gallup polls that are out there, it is Ron Paul that trails Obama. If the election was held today, the 2012 election, if it was held today, Ron Paul is only one point behind him. Ron Paul does the best with Democrats, progressives, and others. And Perry is trailing Obama by three points. So this New World Order puppet, uh, Barack Obama, has basically outlived his political shelf life uh, but the problem is the system is demonizing Ron Paul, trying to ignore Ron Paul, trying to say he can't win, even though he is a top-tier candidate. And here to give us the inside scoop uh, on all things Ron Paul and how America can get behind this true constitutionalist is the editor-in-chief of LewRockwell.com, none other than Lou Rockwell, who also, of course, served as Ron Paul's chief of staff. So it doesn't get any better than Ron Paul, but uh, if there has to be a, a second brightest spot in the universe, it's Lou Rockwell. Lou, thank you for joining us tonight. Alex, great to be with you. So much is happening. Uh, out of the gates, uh, can Ron Paul win? Yeah, Ron Paul can win. And in fact, the fear that the media is exhibiting by first trying to um, put the blackout on him, and then, of course, demonizing him when they're not blacking him out, shows that they are very afraid. He's talking about issues that are resonating with the American people as never before, issues that threaten the establishment, everything from the Pentagon to the CIA to the Federal Reserve to the bankocracy and all the rest of the power elite in Washington. Uh, they're being threatened. They're worried, and they wouldn't be paying, you know, they wouldn't be saying anything about Ron Paul, Rush Limbaugh, Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, all the rest of these people would not be denouncing him if he didn't threaten the uh, apparatus that they're part of. So he can win. And as you say, he's moving up in the polls. He's moving up slowly, but he's moving up organically. He's getting more and more people, young people especially, but people of all ages in all different states, not only in this country, I might add, but around the world. People are, are uh, Ron Paulians in every country. So this is an international movement. Uh, it bodes so well for the American future, as we face, of course, terrible economic and other kinds of troubles. But this is, this is the bright spot in America today is the Ron Paul movement. And of course, I was being somewhat sarcastic and devil's advocate when I said, can he win? I mean, in every poll, he's in the top three candidates. New Gallup poll uh, out today uh, shows him in third place. Some have shown him in second place, others in first place. And it's this mantra of telling the public he can't win. I, I'm sure you saw that pure research uh, piece that Pew put out last week showing that indeed 
Uh, Ron Paul has gotten less coverage than any other candidate, and most of the coverage has been negative. Well, that right there is an endorsement. If Limbaugh is saying he'll destroy the Republican Party, I saw what you wrote. Well, uh, you, you know, good if it destroys the official, you know, Republican Party. <laughs> yeah, that'd and, be good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the proof right there that the whole establishment is coming after him. I mean, that's the proof right there that he's the man for the job, not just his long record of being a constitutionalist. Well, as we know, uh, George H.W. Bush refers to Rush Limbaugh as our boy. And indeed he is, you know, that's he is part of that, the Bush uh, establishment, country club, Republican apparatus. Uh, but the more that people get to know Ron, uh, I believe, by the way, the media stuff is backfiring on them because people who are paying attention realize just how unfair this is. And they want to know, well, why is he being targeted? So once they look at Ron, once they see his YouTubes, of course, if they saw him in person, when they read his articles, read his books, this is, this is the most learned guy running for president in a very, very long time. Maybe we have to go back to Jefferson. I mean, he's so well read. He understands economics. He understands history. He understands everything about what's going on in this country. He's so much smarter the Rick Perry, Bachman, uh, Romney, the rest of these guys. He just is intellectually head and shoulders above them, of course, in character, too. And as people get to know him, they flock to him. So it's, it's quite an extraordinary moment in American history. And uh, I think it's why we have to be fundamentally optimistic, because so many young people uh, have just had it with the system. They know there's a problem. Uh, I just saw a wonderful YouTube put together by some kids uh, last night where it's uh, people all over the country saying, you know, we know there's a problem. We don't believe what the government is saying. We don't believe what the media is saying. Only Ron Paul is telling us the truth. And so, you know, we need a change. We need some hope, not, not like Obama. Not, we don't need any more bankocracy, the two-party bankocracy of the Democrats and the Republicans. We need something different. So Ron Paul is, again, he's, he's, uh, he's scaring the pants off the establishment, and that's very good news. Well, I agree with you. And just about a week ago, The Daily Show came out and really pointed out that there was a uh, open uh, campaign to ignore Ron Paul or they were forced to cover him, say, well, he can't win. And since the dam is broken uh, on the attempt to cover up Ron Paul and since it backfired, I now see them shifting gears. And uh, I fear that we're going to see Aqua Buddha attempts we're going to hear that Ron Paul uh, assassinated Lincoln. Uh, we're going to hear that he blew up the uh, Lusitania, that he started, well, well, that he crucified Christ. Uh, but, but I saw that, again, backfire when they tried it on Rand. What's your political instinct, uh, Lou, uh, on the next way they're going to try to go after Ron Paul, and well, will, it, will it be effective? Uh, I don't think it'll be effective. Of course, it's the old, the old Gandhi line about, uh, you know, first they ignore you, then they attack you, then you win. So it's, it's a, uh, this is just going along with what they usually do. But as we know from polls, as we know from everybody that we talk to ourselves, and you're especially in touch with so many people, nobody trusts the mainstream media. Nobody believes them. Um, the new media, like the Alex Jones Show, people have trust in, but nobody trusts NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and the rest of these. At least not most Americans don't. So when they see these people going after somebody, it makes them ask, what's right about him? So again, all you have to do is direct people to Ron, to his YouTubes, his writings, his, uh, his website, and uh, the website's about him, and uh, people love him, and they, and they have hope, and they no longer feel, uh, they, not that Ron is giving us any soft soap. We know we've got serious economic troubles, very serious economic troubles, and other sorts of troubles ahead, but as Ron explains to us, we can have a way out of it. There is a way out of it. We don't have to have this forever. There is a path to um, economic growth, to prosperity, to human flourishing against all the people who, of course, are against human flourishing, the warmongers, the money counterfeiters, the bankers, and all the, all the rest of the power elite. So uh, they're going to, they're going, of course, going to smear him. They're going to libel him. They're going to toss mud at him. But you know, they talked about Reagan being the Teflon uh, candidate. Actually, Ron Paul's the Teflon candidate, not because um, the stuff just doesn't stick to him. And it's because when people look at him, I, I remember in a previous congressional election where his opponent said he's against the drug war, he wants heroin dispensaries at the public schools, at the elementary schools, so the kids can take heroin. 
Well, of course, nobody, nobody believes that stuff. They look at Ron Paul, they listen to him, they get a sense of the kind of man he is. Now, you don't get that from any kind of politician, uh, a regular politician, maybe you just think he's a slippery guy. People listen to Ron Paul and they think, well, you know, this is a wise man, this is a man who knows, this is a man who is brilliant, and who's actually got hope for the future. Um, so I think, I don't, I think the, the campaign is not going to work. Again, it's going to backfire, just like the blackout backfired. More and more Americans, uh, you know, the <laughs> more they examine Bachman or Perry or Romney or Chris Christie or Palin or any of those other people they're talking about, let alone Jeb Bush, I mean, the other people they're talking about maybe getting in the race, they're all pygmies. They're moral pygmies. They're intellectual pygmies against a very great man, Ron Paul. So, well, they're uh, undoubtedly political I'm hacks. I mean, they're just complete political fake creatures who constantly flip-flop. And I don't want to dwell too long on this, but Rick Perry, who pledged not to run, of course, broke the pledge. It was all about peaking interest in the uh, reluctant hero. He's a guy for forced inoculations, NAFTA superhighways, Al Gore's former chief of staff uh, in Texas. And this now the media is saying is the front runner. And I just say shame on America if you go for another Obama type, another Rick Perry, another package plastic Ken doll if they don't choose Ron Paul. But briefly, uh, your take on Rick Perry and, and then the fact that Ron Paul is really the man of the hour. He predicted with precision along with you and others exactly what would happen with the inflation tax and so much more and uh, your view on the uh, upcoming death of the dollar. Well, I think first of all, as to Rick Perry, there are many things to say about him. To me, the key thing that stands out in my mind is the fact that in Texas, he's known as Gardasil Rick. And that's <laughs> because he took money from the Merck drug company, as did the Republican Party of Texas and all the Republican politicians down there, to force a very dangerous and untested HPV vaccine on every sixth grade girl in public school in Texas. The fact that this man who you know, talks about the Obama mandate, the fact that this guy would have used government force and of course a, a huge ripoff for Merck, I mean hundreds of dollars per shot, uh, and these girls have to have multiple shots, causing so many illnesses, happened in England too. The fact that this guy would have used the power of the governorship in return for bribes, maybe they're legal bribes or they're still bribes, uh, to uh, force this dangerous vaccine on little girls. What a criminal. What a monster. I mean, Rick, Rick Perry, I mean, all these politicians, of course, are criminals and monsters, uh, the regular politicians. But Perry really stands out as, it seems to me, a first-class creep, a totalitarian, as you say, the Trans-Texas Highway, I mean, all the various things he's done. This guy is just, uh, so I, I, I don't, I'm not worried at all about Perry, because as the word gets out about who he really is, uh, he's going to go nowhere. I don't think Americans are ready for another George W. Bush, and uh, he's just, he's another clown like Bush. But he's trying to become Ron Paul, saying that the Federal Reserve is almost treasonous. Well, no, it's a private offshore corporation. It's looking out for itself. How is, how is that treasonous? Isn't it really treasonous that Congress and others have let them do this to our country? And he's trying to become Ron Paul. And I think it shows how powerful the message of liberty is that you and others and Ron Paul have been real standard bearers for, that now Rick Perry is openly trying to shape shift into Ron Paul. And if we simply get out the truth about his record and say, no, Ron Paul is the real Ron Paul. He's the real McCoy, not Rick Perry. I mean, that is... Job number one, I think, is to expose the Rick Perry hoax. Well, I think that's right. But you know what, as you say, it is a tribute to Ron that he feels, correctly so, that by denouncing the Federal Reserve and denouncing Ben Bernanke, it's good politics. So this is because Ron, you know, uh, when I, I've been interested in the Fed for a very long time, and I can tell you people's eyes would glaze over when you tried to discuss it. Ron Paul made the Fed interesting. He made Americans aware that we're being ripped off by the Federal Reserve and its associated banks. And so that the establishment said, well, Rick Perry really damaged himself when he said that about Bernanke and the Fed. Actually, he didn't, of course. He helped himself. Uh, but he is a fake. He's a phony. He's trying to steal Ron Paul's thunder. But I think it's, it's not going to work. Ron Paul is the real deal. And as I can testify myself from having worked for him and having known him for so many years, what you see on the television screen is actually the real guy. I mean, he actually, unlike... Uh, other people I've known in politics who are not the same as on the TV screen. Ron Paul's the real deal. And he actually has studied the Federal Reserve. 
He's read vastly, and he knows everything about the history of the Fed, everything they're doing to the, to the, uh, to the dollar. And uh, they are bringing about, of course, as you pointed out, the death of the dollar. Um, we face, uh, it's a horror, we, we don't know the timing, uh, and the dollar is going to be strengthened probably by all the continuing troubles that the banks are giving the uh, European countries and destroying the, uh, uh, the euro. But we're going to see much higher inflation here. Uh, it's going to be horrific, probably going to be worse than the 1970s. But again, we don't have to have that permanently. We don't have to have a, a uh, counterfeiting board in Washington, D.C., ripping off regular people for the benefit of Wall Street and the big banks and the government itself. So we don't have to have all these wars. What are they fighting? Six or seven wars and, of course, secret wars and uh, just uh, wading uh, knee-deep in blood all over the world. Uh, other countries resent it. Americans ought to resent it. Uh, Ron Paul is talking about really the most important issue, even more important than the money issue, and it's hard to think of anything that is, except the one issue of war and peace. So uh, no more wars, bring the troops home, stop the counterfeiting, cut government spending. It can be done. And I know that people have questioned, well, if Ron Paul were elected, the Congress would never go along with him. But all I can say is if Ron Paul were is to be elected, and the kind of mandate he would have, all those congressmen who care about being elected more than anything else and being reelected would be asking, Dr. Paul, what do we do? Absolutely. I mean, the, whole, the whole country would be in the mood for big changes. A, uh, I hate to use Roosevelt's phrase, but an actual new deal, a new deal for the American people, a new deal of freedom, a new deal of prosperity, a Ron Paul new deal. Absolutely. And uh, just 15, 20 years ago, he couldn't get one co-sponsor to audit the Fed. It passed the House as you know, last year. And with Ron Paul as president, they would have a lot of trouble. Um, no army can stop an idea whose time has come, as the French philosopher Victor Hugo said. And after decades of laboring uh, out there in the wilderness, Lou, uh, you and others that uh, deserve so much credit, uh, our time is coming. The, liberty is approaching. And even if Ron Paul doesn't win this round, he certainly wins by injecting real issues. And uh, freedom is popular, and we need That's to right. legalize legalize freedom, uh, as Ron Paul and as you have said. Lou Rockwell of lourockwell.com. I'll continue to track all the amazing research and reports you put out, and also the work you do over at the Von Mies Institute that you founded and head up. Lou Rockwell, thank you so much for joining us. Alex, thank you so much. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place against the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear. Coming up, we've got a special report on the news behind the news. The rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, in Libya. But first, the rest of the news, the police state news. You know, uh, yesterday, the CEO and main owner of Apple Computers, Steve Jobs, came out and said, hey, I've got health problems, and if they ever got too bad for me to continue my chairmanship, uh, I'm going to leave. And so he's basically made that announcement. And then I watched the mainstream corporate whore media engage in a love fest about how humanitarian he is, how great he is, and how he cares so much about everybody. And I just want to say to Steve Jobs, you may be this big Zen Buddha as we've heard about all day, uh, but I saw your company put out a lot of PR propaganda concerning the fact that the factories that you control in China have record suicides at them. In fact, hundreds of times uh, the uh, average 
that we see in other Chinese or even U.S. factories. And so that's something you guys need to answer for. Also, you have Al Gore on your board uh, who has palatial mansions all over the world and all these jet aircraft who lectures the general public they shouldn't be able to take hot baths. And so you guys are always pushing carbon taxes uh, while you're responsible for absolutely huge carbon outputs of the devil gas carbon dioxide generated uh, from your server farms, which, again, I'm not concerned. The plants are really hungry for that carbon dioxide. But you say it's horrible and evil. And so before you prepare to leave this world and cross to the river Styx and give Charon his piece of gold, uh, wouldn't you like to actually become the humanitarian that you've always claimed you are? I mean, I get really sick of the eugenicist globalists pushing the case to kill Granny, uh, Bill Gates, uh, and, and your other cohorts that came out of the same NSA, IBM Nest, lecturing us all day uh, from the West Coast and uh, Silicon Valley. I mean, uh, we're going to file a special report dealing with this later next week, but just look at the co-founder uh, of Apple, who told major newspapers that he basically supports a transhumanist view of the world uh, and that the human race is destined to become a little more than house pets. You are the people selling this view that humans should just give up to your machines and give up our humanity because it's not worth anything. Well, if we're worthless, like the Chinese workers you've got to put nets outside for because they're committing suicide by the hundreds, if we are so worthless, then don't grandstand and tell us we're worth something when we buy your trendy, fancy, shiny uh, objects. I mean, of all of these devices that are doing the programming, we're not programming the machines, they're now programming us, yours are some of the prettiest baubles. But again, as you approach the event horizon, uh, I beg of you to simply look destiny and eternity in the mirror and actually do something good. What's the solution? Give Apple, the biggest corporation in the world, arguably, after ExxonMobil, came out and said, hey, we are going to charge a few dollars more for our iPhones and iPads and the rest of it, or maybe take a few dollars less in profit to certify and seal on our Chinese-made products that it was a living wage. I was reading where some of these workers have to chain their children up to power poles down the street every day, and they, they sit there starving and defecating on themselves while the parents hope to get enough money to hopefully feed them that night. Uh, I think with all your tens of billions uh, that you could shut up and stop acting like you're a good little socialist and lecturing us all day about carbon taxes and have a move to certify that your products are human friendly. You know, like on the back of the shampoo saying animal friendly, animals weren't tested on. What about Chinese slaves? Were they, were they tested on? And where'd you get that liver, Steve? That's the type of stuff I'm talking about here. Okay. So before you make that jump into hyperspace, you need to decide, is it going to be down there or is it going to be up there? And are there atheists in foxholes? That's a question for you to be asking yourself right now and everybody else that buys the Apple slave goods. I think the Apple slave goods are excellent compared to other slave goods. Every other major company's like this. We admittedly have them in our office. We admit that we're hypocrites here, but we don't own the slaves. And I would pay a few dollars more so that they could at least feed their children. Okay, I'm done, Steve. I know you're a big corporate winner. You're gonna go down with the ship, and I understand. I just thought I'd, well, be a little angel on your shoulder and maybe give you a alternative. Now, that was my uh, pontification for the evening, and it was quite lengthy. That's why this is a special report, not the news show, premiering next Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, at PrisonPlanet.tv. We're seeing a lot of police state news out there, and, well, Big Sis, you know her, the jackbooted uh, gentleman um, who was the former governor of Arizona. Well, Big Sis gives green light for drone that tases suspects from above. And it's got shotgun mounts, taser mounts. Why, it can do whatever you need it to do. And they're putting out all these great promotional videos showing them chasing uh, the uh, evil people uh, that aren't submitting to the global system. And, and, 
And see, here's my issue with this. There's this giant arms buildup with our tax money in the United States and in other Western countries to give the latest high-tech gadgets to the police who are just dying to try them out on us. And I've seen all the deaths from tasers and people being tortured with them for asking cops directions. And I ask us, I ask the public, is this something you want to be part of? Is this something you want to support? Were you given a memo on this as a taxpayer to have these drones chasing you around in the streets? I remember IBM a decade ago funding the Digital Angel and seeing the Mexican Attorney General come out and say, I'm making my employees take these implantable chips. Well, now hospitals are pushing these on people and parents are being told in the U.S. it's a great thing. And I saw a report that tens of thousands of people in Mexico and in other areas south of Mexico and Latin America are taking these in the name of protecting themselves from kidnapping. So we see more and more of the mainlining of these police state type control grids. And finally, in police state news tonight, Natural News and Mike Adams have learned more about the Rossum food raids and other raids against dairies across the country. It turns out that just like in the raids against Amish that lasted in some cases over a year and spent more than a million dollars, they send in government agents posing as uh, health food conscious people to set up the Amish and others to beg them, in some cases for months, to sell them some raw healthy milk. Then the police stage a SWAT team raid on the Amish and other groups so they can then show the armed raid to jurors and say, look, we wouldn't SWAT team somebody if they weren't a hardened criminal, put them in jail. Some of these people are facing multi-hundred thousand dollar bonds for the crime of producing and selling fresh raw milk cheeses that you can still buy at Whole Foods and other mainline stores for a limited time. So the police state isn't worried about the big banksters and their tens of trillions stolen of taxpayer money or the derivative scam. They're worried about people nationwide selling eggs, tomatoes, squash, and yes, raw, real milk to the population. Now, in some interesting news that isn't as depressing, we have a report here out of Reuters. Astronomers discover planet made of diamond. They've got radio telescopes that at hundreds and hundreds of light years away, in some cases thousands, can actually, with a spectrograph, uh, pick up the signature of the planet. And the new planet is far denser than any other uh, known so far and consists largely of carbon. Because it's so dense, scientists calculate that the carbon must be crystalline. So a large part of this strange world will be effectively made of diamond. Now coming back to a place a little closer, our little planet, third rock from the sun, here in the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy, to a place in North Africa where a dictator for 42 years has controlled the nation. And he's being exchanged for a, another dictator. Uh, but this new dictatorship is the plutocratic offshore central banks that are now admitting that six months ago, a month and a half before the UN resolution or the U.S. got involved in this new war that we were told wasn't a war and it was a kinetic military action, a month and a half before that was even announced to the world and Obama told us it would last days, not weeks, we are now told that yes, indeed, U.S. Special Forces, British Special Forces, NATO Special Forces were involved from the beginning. So it wasn't or an organic uprising of the Libyan people against Muammar Gaddafi. No, it was Western Special Forces going in to the east of the country and being armed over the border uh, from the nation of Egypt and that those armed rebels tried to overthrow the government and when Gaddafi resisted it and resisted the Al-Qaeda forces, that's who they admit they are, the world was told he was attacking peaceful demonstrators. So we take you now to our final report of the evening filed by Rob Dew on the subject of Libya and the unfolding humanitarian disaster. NATO hands terrorists who killed U.S. troops control of Libya. Al-Qaeda gets a new home after the so-called rebels seize Tripoli.
While U.S. troops are dying in Afghanistan and Iraq in the supposed war on terror, these same terrorists are now being handed control of an entire country and its lucrative resources. As a massive NATO bombardment of Tripoli aids the al-Qaeda-backed rebels in their overthrow of Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi himself has gone into hiding outside the city. Shortly after the start of the conflict in March, Hakim al-Hassadi, the leader of the anti-Qaddafi rebel army, admitted that rebel ranks include al-Qaeda terrorists who have killed U.S. troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Al-Hassadi describes the fighters as, quote, patriots and good Muslims, not terrorists. As the Wall Street Journal reported in a piece entitled, Ex-Mujahideen Lead Libyan Rebels, Al-Qaeda terrorists who worked directly for bin Laden were tasked with recruiting, training, and acting as frontline field commanders for the rebel army. In 2002, French intelligence experts revealed how Western intelligence agencies bankrolled the Libyan al-Qaeda cell controlled directly by Osama bin Laden to hatch a plot to kill Colonel Gaddafi that was foiled in March of 1996. Indeed, it was Gaddafi's Libya who put out the first Interpol warrant for bin Laden's arrest in 1998. Western intelligence agencies blocked the warrant from being pursued, allowing bin Laden and al-Qaeda to go on and kill more than 200 people in the truck bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. Some of the very rebels now being funded, trained, and given embassies in Britain and U.S. were part of the al-Qaeda cell that tried to kill Gaddafi on behalf of the United States and Britain 15 years ago. Libya's future hinges on the globalist ability to lie long enough to get an occupation force in place. Richard Haas, president of the Fortune 500 line Council on Foreign Relations, has stated clearly that, quote, Libya now needs boots on the ground. NATO boots, to be specific. The UK has already admitted to having prepared at least 200 more troops to land in Libya at any given moment and arrangements are already underway to tap NATO members for additional troop commitments. This is Rob Dew for InfoWars Nightly News. Well, great job this evening to our entire crew, and that basically concludes uh, this special report. Uh, to be clear, we're going to be doing special reports that are more extensive, like the one you've just watched tonight, but we're also going to have the focused, hard-hitting, condensed news program that will air Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central, that's 8 p.m. Eastern, every night for 30 minutes. But many evenings there will be expanded special reports, documentaries, uh, exclusive live interviews, and even some live style call-in shows. Because we've been leading uh, the very cutting edge of alternative media for 16 years, and we're reaching so many millions of people. That's why we've built uh, this new studio and are expanding. And what you're seeing here are just the very um, start and the beginnings of much wider things that we're going to be doing. And I want to thank all of you that are here at the genesis uh, of this new operation. Now, I told you that a lot of times at the end of the news show or at the end of a special report, we'll have an expanded commentary. And so I want to leave you uh, with more of Alex Jones with a report I uh, filed yesterday and we're premiering here where I break down one of the most insane outrages I've ever seen. Every time I think that I have seen it all, every time that I think that the global social engineers can't be more arrogant in their activities, I am shocked. Every time I think I can't be shocked, I am shocked. They have banned the police, the firefighters, the military, the, the heroes of 9-11 from being part of the 10th anniversary. And I uh, answer the questions in this special report of why the establishment is doing something uh, this, this, this bizarre. It's because they're scared of these people. They know these folks are awake to what really happened on 9-11. And that is the answer. So I take you now from Alex Jones to Alex Jones. And we'll see you back live tomorrow on the radio, 11 a.m. Central. Every time I think the globalist cannot top their outrageous crimes and bizarre behavior, I am completely blown away. CNN, Fox News, you name it, are reporting that the firefighters, the police officers, the National Guard, 
the medics, the doctors that rush towards the destruction as true heroes on 9-11 are barred from the September 11th, 10th anniversary events in New York. Here's the headline out of CNN. First responders to cry exclusion from 9-11 ceremony. Regardless of what the official story is, whether it's true or not, you can't debate that these men and women were heroes. They rushed in when everybody else ran out. Thousands of first responders died, and they're now barred from being part of the memorial services. And you have to ask yourself why. This is happening because they are questioning the official story, the official fairy tale. And they're also questioning the fact that they've been blocked from getting medical care for nine plus years. I'm the first person to officially question the official story of 9-11. And in the first few years, I went to Ground Zero on the anniversaries, and a lot of the people there were angry at me. A lot of the first responders that were there were angry. But in the last five years, something else happened entirely. The majority of the first responders came over, firefighters, police, captains, commanders, you name it, and shook my hand and said, we remember the bombs going off. We remember the reports of controlled demolition. After all, they were told that the air was safe to breathe, even though it was admitted that Christina Todd Whitman first reported deadly asbestos and other chemicals piled up feet deep. She was ordered by the White House to lie and tell first responders no respiration masks needed. Don't worry, go in now, there's no health problem. And it gets even worse. Not only are these heroes barred from the 10th anniversary where these whore politicians are going to grandstand and talk about how they're heroes and sell a police state in America and all these wars on the backs of the dead and dying. Now it's come out that they run them through a terror database. For nine years, we pushed to get health care for those who were poisoned by asbestos and other chemicals. And finally, Congress passed a paltry sum to give them some medical care. But they say you've got to be run through a Homeland Security database every time you get that health care. So the firefighters, the police officers, the military survivors, the veterans, are run through a terror database every time they get a prescription filled, every time they get medical care. This is outrageous, and now we've learned Unions all over the country make their members get Homeland Security approval to have a job. This is preparing everyone for a system where if you're not a good little New World Order minion, a good little globalist Nazi, you're not going to be able to have a job. And I remember watching Governor Ridge, the former head of Homeland Security, on C-SPAN admit this eight years ago. This is such an incredible betrayal. And it shows you why the federal documents we've received from law enforcement are so pertinent where they list the number one terror threat as returning veterans, gun owners, libertarians, people that want to end the Fed, people that want to end these wars, people that want to get us out of the UN. The truth is we have criminal banks in control of America that are looting this country. And they want to use the image of those firefighters and police, those heroes, to push their police state takeover and TSA going on the streets of America. And they don't want those angry survivors who have pointed out the deadly dust and pointed out the fact that there were bombs in the buildings. They don't want them down there with Obama and Bush and the rest of them while these blood-sucking globalists use their heroics and their memory to sell their tyranny. But in the final equation, it is going to be truth, not delusions and not propaganda that is going to save our republic and our society and reverse the criminal tide that is dominating our species. It is going to be the cold, hard facts that is going to defeat the globalist and their spin doctors and propaganda. That's why in closing, I want to encourage all of you to spread the word about our new weeknight TV show that kicks off September 1st, next Thursday at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. It's going to be a hard-hitting, focused, and condensed news broadcast for 30 minutes every night. And many weeknights, we're going to have expanded special reports that air right after the new news show. We're winning. We're waking people up. 
free humanity cannot be stopped because the light of liberty burns in all of your hearts and souls. So please spread the word about InfoWars Nightly News. And please spread the word about the fact that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Remember, this is an info war. There's a war on for your mind. Break those mental shackles today and fulfill your destiny to be a free, sentient human being. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place against the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv, download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The Info War now goes into high gear.